Hello, I'm uh, Tony Moss. I'm the chef and proprietor here at Craigie on Main in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And today I'm going to show you how we prepare our uh, Banyuls cured duck breast. Ta -da. Basically, it's based on a, um, a, a concept of what some people call duck prosciutto. It's a cured duck breast, and it's really simple. We take a good fatty duck breast. So we're using um, a Moulard duck breast here. Moulard ducks are the ducks that are used for foie gras production primarily. And we're making sure that we're using every part of the duck a little bit more sustainable that way. So you know, the legs we would confit, the bones we would make a broth, the breast, um, instead of something, doing something that's completely ubiquitous and just searing or roasting or grilling, which is very tasty, but you see maybe a little bit more often, we're also, we decided that we would cure it. Um, gives us a little bit more flexibility and some other options on our menu. Um, it can be incorporated into a salad, it can be in our charcuterie plate, or it can be used as an amuse bouche, uh, all of which are really, really tasty. But I think it's also really interesting for anybody at home to be able to do because it's really simple. It requires about six minutes of prep time, uh, 24 hours curing in salt, and then you hang it in your fridge for about a week, and then you slice it. And honestly, that's it. And you've got an awesome thing that you can keep in your freezer and whip out whenever you feel like it, whether you're throwing a party or you're just hungry watching a game of football. Uh, it's a really good snack. So we're gonna start here with the raw breast. And I've done nothing to this breast besides take it off of uh, the duck itself. Um, you can buy uh, the breast as is, just like this. They usually come in packs of two, so you'd, be, you'd have a couple different options of what you could do with the other breast, either curing it or grilling it if you wanted to speak. But um, what we're gonna do here first is separate the tenderloin off of the duck breast. Um, basically, it wants to come off on its own anyway, so it doesn't require any high butchery skills and you would take it off because it's gonna come off anyways. So this is now a nice little snack that you can put on your grill tonight, um, or if you wanna save them, make a duck mousse if that's something that you're also interested in. We're just gonna trim off a little bit of this fat in here, nothing complicated, and there's this little bit of silver skin right there that we're just gently gonna take off there, just for a little bit cleaner. Is it poisonous? No, but it just, it just makes it a little bit of a cleaner, a little bit of a nicer product in the end. The fat is something that's really good, especially when it's cured. Sometimes I'll just look around and think that this is maybe just a little too much. So I'll just trim off a little bit of the excess. Again, nothing really complicated and it's purely subjective. Um, and if sometimes if it was a particularly fatty duck, I might trim just a little bit off, but, but this is really just a nice layer of fat. Looks pretty tasty. And that's our duck breast. So what I would do next is with some coarse sea salt, right here, um, and we're using a roll-on coarse sea salt. Um, you could use kosher, it would work fine, or you could, could use something like a more expensive salt. Although to be honest, um, the flavor that's gonna come through to me isn't so dramatic that it's totally worth it. Roll-on makes a really nice coarse sea salt that we literally bury the duck breast like this, so this one, for um, about 24 hours. Just a full-on cure. That's the only real complicated cure. You don't need any pink salt, or anything else, just you're gonna take this out of cure and we're gonna call that a day. Um, leaving a little bit of the salt on. We, don't, we wouldn't wanna rinse it, we don't wanna add any moisture to this. Part of the whole idea of curing is that you're actually removing moisture from the duck. So I've chosen to use um, a really neat wine, Banyuls, it's from the southwest of, Tan uh, southwest of France. The town is actually called Banyuls, so this is not a brand or anything like that. We use, uh, for this purpose, the Col de Polil, but we also use Domaine de Trajane sometimes, two uh, really just great makers. It's a unique wine, I guess most similar to what I might think of as port, but to me it's even a little bit more profound and unique, and obviously a lot of people haven't used it. But if all you had your hands on was port, or you wanted to mix it up with something like Bandera or red wine, any of these things would work um, at all. And we add a little bit of Banyuls vinegar too. Vinegar is um, somewhat important because it, it helps keep the color while it's curing. Otherwise, you might get a little bit more of a gray um, after the week of uh, hanging in your fridge. It's not, again, not imperative. It's just something that we've come up with and it adds just a, you don't even notice the acidity, but it just helps keep its color over the process. So we're now gonna marinate. By marinate, I mean just a quick douse and a rub on both sides with a little bit of the vinegar and a little bit of the wine itself. So just basically getting it wet. We're not gonna wait any longer, then we're gonna, just gonna take our spice mix, and again, we're using Szechuan peppercorns and Telecherry peppercorns, and we're gonna lay it on pretty heavy. And if you think about what a pastrami looks like with heavy spice crust, that's kind of what we're going for here. 
Let's flip it over. Again, very low degree of technicality with a high degree of yumminess at the end. Sweet. Okay. We're going to clean up our board. Once we get to this stage, we're gonna, then going to take some cheesecloth, which is pretty easy to find. And we don't need a ton of it. All right. We're going to take our duck breast and we're going to roll it up in the cheesecloth. Using cheesecloth is important because the whole idea of curing and drying it means it needs to breathe. So you wouldn't really want to substitute with anything else. Plastic wrap, anything like that, it's not going to do what it needs to do. If anything, it would probably go bad over time. So we're just going to kind of make it snug. I want to keep its shape. I don't want to press real hard. Um, but this is going to shrink over the next seven to 10 days that it's curing. So if we don't make it snug now, it's going to kind of be floating in the bag. Again, not devastating if you don't, but it just makes it look a little nicer as an end product. So real nice like that. I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to fold this over. So now we're ready to tie this baby up. Get our kitchen twine. Um, of course, I'm privy to all sorts of fancy butcher knots and stuff like that. You can. It looks pretty. It's a little bit faster for me to do that, but I'll show you what I would do if I was at home, which is not technical at all. I would tie a knot there just to fasten it and then basically just go down. And again, I'm making it taut, but I'm not trying to strangle it. But because it's going to shrink, I just want to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And then when it's done, it, the twine is actually going to kind of contribute to the rustic look at the end. You're going to see the twine marks in the flesh itself. What I might do now is tie the knot here. An important little step is to give myself this extra stuff, extra twine here, because now I'm going to be able to hang this. If you had a wine cooler, that'd be great, but I would just hang this in my fridge and literally not look at it for, depending on the size of the breast and depending on how full and how cold your fridge was, about, at minimum seven days. Sometimes I find it takes closer to 10. Um, and then you would unwrap it, and this is what you're going to find. And you can see, obviously, the transformation. Raw, un, you know, uncured. Here it's cured, dried, seven to 10 days. And it's got a really nice shape. We'll cut into it. And you can see the rosiness, the full cure, beautiful fat that, in which you can taste this on camera, but it's actually quite hard and quite silky. If you've ever had lardo or cured fat back, it's very similar to that. It's just very melting. And you would slice the paper thin, and that's what I'm going to show you next. So here we have our final duck breast, which I've sliced on our slicer. If you don't have a slicer at home, just do the best you can to Make it nice and thin, and yeah, you can see why some people call it dark prosciutto, although obviously that would be different seasonings. And this is our Bangles wine, it's one peppercorn, pure duck breast. It's awesome. Thank you.